couple of these lifters, um, the basic principle, uh, first of all, this is a type of electrohydrodynamic electro thruster. So what's happening is you have a corona wire on top, thinner the better, um, that charges up the uh, ions in the air. Um, what ion gets charged up depends on, or what, what, what molecules get charged up depends on the uh, polarity. If you're, if you charge it up with a positive um, charge, then it's the nitrogen ions. If you charge up negative, then it's oxygen. So you have a, a cloud of charged ions up here that get pulled down to the collector plate uh, of reverse polarity, which cr which creates a flow of um, charged air. And if that flow is high enough, then it should overcome the the mass of this, which is made out of light materials, balsa wood, very thin aluminum foil, and it should start to fly. It's not um, it's not just counteracting gravity. Um, Sometimes a lot of people say these are anti-gravity devices. It will fly sideways as well. And uh, we found that they're not so easy to make. We've tried a few different models here. This one, um, it just seems to be too heavy. Oh, another problem is that maybe our, our voltage, our, our supply is not high enough voltage. Um, Ion here has a smaller one here. It's even lighter weight. You can see for size comparison. Yeah, here, here is the, uh, the base of ionic breeze. We have it connected up. Here's one of the terminals. This is the negative terminal. And connected up to the uh, skirt. Positive terminal, uh, uh, terminal connected up to the corona wire on top. And when we turn it on here, make sure all the wires are not touching each other. Woo! <laughs> it actually lifts off. That actually flew a lot better than what we've, had, we've seen in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Dude! If we, uh, it's still on. So you see, it, it's trying to fly around. Oh, can you pull back on the camera a bit? I'm actually supporting it with the wire right now, but you can see that it's, uh, it's kind of skidding all around because of the, uh, the breeze. And we can show that breeze with, um, some smoke. Yeah, I think that showed it pretty good. Like, like usual, we like to jump into some of these things without you know, doing all the research first, trying it out ourselves. And so now I've done a little bit more uh, uh, research on how these work and, and the, the little tips on making them correctly. And I know there's a few things we're doing wrong. You really need to avoid all sharp points. So the, the bottom skirt here actually should have a rounded top, so it's a nice smooth uh, a collecting surface. Um, the distance from the corona wire to the, the collector plate it needs to be even because it's, uh, the, the electrons are going to try to find the shortest distance to jump. You want the wire to be as close to the, uh, the skirt as you can without getting an arc. Um, so yeah, there's a little thing, so a few adjustments we'll have to make and try it again. That's a really cool experiment and what I love hearing is how uh, we can encourage the scientists to get into these things um, without thoroughly understanding what's going on because it's real interesting once you've done it a little bit and then can't fi figure out why it's not working the way that you want it to and it becomes like a personal adventure I guess if you try to if you try to get a pretty good idea of what might hurt you and and either avoid or dive into that so here's another example of um, kind of ionic propulsion or in this case it's electrostatic attraction between a little uh, rotor and an electrode. And it might take a little bit of uh, help to get going. You can see that the, the, the post the rotor is sticking on is attached to the negative terminal. And I have the positive terminal in my hand. And as the, uh, um, the rotor comes around, it gets attracted because opposite uh, charges attract. That's an ion windmill. These uh, high voltage generators will actually generate a pretty large electrostatic field all around them, which is really important if you have sensitive electronics around, you can start blowing out those electronics. Um, we have a, a little electrostatic meter sitting over here. Um, it's about so we're two feet away. So two feet away, turn on the... Uh, yeah, that's get, that showed. Yeah. As you get closer, you'll see it jump way up. And Monty, it's it's putting ions, it's it's putting little 
little ionized particles into the air, right, which they can get sucked into your computer vents and wreak havoc on your processors, right? What actually happens is, you, you're, you're, actually, what's happening is um, creating electro potential, uh, you're, ele a potential difference between uh, this, uh, anything that's grounded and anything that can pick up this electrostatic charge. And so some electronics are sensitive, especially like you know, high performance test equipment or uh, high frequency equipment. Um, and you can start blowing out transistors. Today, yeah. most consumer grade products are well protected. So you probably won't see an effect due to it. I was at the thrift store looking for uh, fodder for making hacks and I ran across this thing called an Ionic Breeze air purifier. We saw one when we went to the thrift store too. What'd you do with it? Well, I picked one up and I took it apart and found that they have a really nice high voltage generator inside them. So I went back to the thrift store and picked up a second one. And first I want to show you what happened to the second one that had <laughs> a blown fuse and I decided to put a jumper wire across the fuse and then <laughs> short across all the interlocks. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs>